We have the M3 benchmarks. Pretty good. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So anyways, if you have not been under a rock, you know that the M3 line of chips just came out by Apple, right? And we're all excited about it. We're waiting for the benchmarks and now they're out. What I have in this video is I have the benchmarks for the M3 chip, the standard one, the M3 Pro. A lot of people didn't have that, but they just came out. And then the M3 Max, all right? In my last video, I did a, maybe last video or last two videos, I did a video on saying, well, maybe you shouldn't go with the M3 chip, go with the M2 Pro instead, just because of you get more features. And I'm still sticking to that, but it's really close because the reason I'm sticking to that is because of cost really, because those are gonna go on sale. Anyways, long story short, we're gonna go through all these different benchmarks right now, and I'm gonna show you how fast these new line of M3s are. They're pretty impressive, so let's get into it. All right, so just for a reference, I'm gonna start with some of the earlier chips, the M1 and the M2 chip, and then I'm gonna work my way up. All right, so the very first one's the M1 chip right here, you can see it. So what we have is we have 2394 and 8719. Now this is gonna be, just to let you know, Geekbench 6, see it right there? And it's an Apple M1 chip, the standard M1 chip. I'm just using this for a reference, 2394, 8719. You can see the score right there. That's late 2020, all right? So that's where we started. That's the machine that's sitting right there in a beautiful machine. It can do everything you want it to do, basically. I mean, heavy core, 4K, 60 frame per second edits, maybe not. It still works per, you know, good. It just takes longer. So anyways, there's a the score here. You can see it. Then we went up to the M2. Again, Geekbench 6, M2 right here, standard M2 chip, 2685, 10,061. So you can see the difference. So M1, it went up about 300 to 400 in single core. And then from the M1, here's 8,700. It went up to around 10,061. So you can see that jump and that progression there, right? Not too bad, right? Now, as we move on and we keep going, we're gonna go into the standard, here it is, the M3. So let's click on it. We're up to 3,068 on single core and 11,888. I've seen this sometimes in the low 12s as well. It depends on what benchmark's coming in. So this could even be a little bit higher, and this could be close to 12, somewhere in that range, but I'm just kind of trying to average everything out. You can see right here, it's a standard M3 chip. So it's 3,068 to 11,888 versus the M1. Was, you know, obviously this is gonna be about 700 more here, a couple thousand more here. Here's the M2, so it's, it's definitely beating the M2 by, I don't know what that is, you know, maybe 18% or something, somewhere in that range. So you can see that progression. So this is really fast, actually. And like I said, I, in my last video, I did say don't buy the M3 standard with the base model because it only has 8 gigs of RAM. And I'm kind of sticking to that because you can get the M2 Pro, which we'll get into in a second, for about um, the same cost or less, actually. And probably less now, especially in the holiday season. So there we are. There's the M3. As we work our way up, let's go to the next one. So here's the M2 Pro. And that's like what I just told you about. So see the score here? If I look here, this is the M2 Pro, and this is going to have a little bit higher multi-core. See it there? A little bit higher than the M3. So there's my kind of justification. But the single core, which you use a lot, sometimes a lot more, is actually lower. 2685 versus 3000 for the standard M3 there. So you can see that even the Pro and M2 is has got a slower single core. We kind of know that because those are just single cores. The dual core is very, very close. I mean, again, you can kind of weigh these out. They're going to be very close maybe not even, you can't even tell the difference. So you go with the 14 inch 2023 MacBook, what is this, the M2 Pro, if you can get the cost way down, because don't forget when you go with the base model of the M3 and you gotta add eight gigs, you're up to 1800 bucks, you can pick these other M2s up probably for about 14, 1500 bucks during Christmas season, all right? Anyways, as we go down, so that's the M2 Pro, you can see it there. So now we're gonna go to the next one. This is really, a lot of people haven't come out with this yet, but this is the M3 Pro, see it there? 3,035, and again, I don't know why that's so much different than the M, what is this, the M3. It's really close, actually, but it's just, yeah, it's actually lower, but it's just actually, you know, they're about the same. It's just going to be depending on what the test they ran. But this is the kicker over here, 15,173 for the M3 Pro. See it there? So if you go back to the M2 Pro, 12,453. If you go to the M3 Pro, 15,173. So you can see right off the bat that, it, look at that jump. I mean, I don't know what that comes out to, but that's a considerable about three, you know, 2,500 or something. So it's going to be probably over 20% there at least. Not bad. This is, you know, one of the few ones that came out recently. So they're going to probably move a little bit on these, these benchmarks. You know, obviously there's a small sample right now. And it's going to even out, but it should be fairly close to this. And that's a pretty big powerhouse, the M3 Pro. So if you're thinking about, is it going to be enough to get the M3 Pro or the Max? 
I mean, look at this. This is basically fast enough, I think faster than the max, and we'll get into that in a second. So let's go to the next one down here. So you see the score there. So the next one here, this is the M2 Max. And if you notice, the M2 Max is slower than the M3 Pro. Again, these are taken with a grain of salt. They're gonna divvy, you know, move around a little bit, but still, 3,000 to 15,000. Here's the Max, M2 Max, 2,700 to 14,000. So the Max of the M2 is slower than the Pro of the M3. Pretty impressive, right? And as we keep going down the list here, so what is, do we have for the, let's just see here, the M3 Max, my God. 3169 for the single core, 21137 for the multi core. Pretty crazy. You can see it right there. And I mean, look at the jump here from this is basically the max, the M2 max, 14,077. Look over here, 21,137. That's a major, huge difference. I don't know, that's 40 or 50%. It's a big difference between the max levels. Again, you don't need this because obviously the pros now in the M3s are just as fast as the maxes and the M2s. And I have never heard anyone that says they need more than the max. But if you need this much power, it's there for the M3 Max. And uh, you can see the scores, they came in right there. And then finally, just to kind of throw a, you know, some salt on this wound, you can see here, this is the Ultra. So the M2 Ultra, the, the, the Ultra chip of all time here, is actually looks like it's about the same, maybe a little bit higher, but about the same as the M3 Max. So we're kind of taking steps down, which means you know the Ultra, which was super expensive, you can now get with the Max, the Max you can now get with the Pro, and so on and so on. So overall, you can see the scores in here. Again, this is the M3 Max. Very impressive. I'm not gonna say much more than this. In this video, I just wanted to kind of throw them out there. I still think if you're gonna buy the base M3, get the M2 Pro with it beefed up and you can also get a sale on that and you're gonna probably save a couple hundred bucks, three to 400 bucks. They're very, very close. If you want that extra year of service, I guess, as far as the OS, you gotta consider that as well. But overall, they're gonna be super close, so you gotta make your own decision there. But this is it. I think they're gonna come out and kind of get a little bit, you know, they're gonna refine these a little bit, but I don't think they're gonna be too much more. You tell me in the comments, are these beasts or not, or do you guys expect less or more? It's not really worth it to upgrade, I think, from the M2, from the M1, maybe. But if it's not, you know, if the system's working for you, why upgrade? Don't give Apple your money unless you have to. I always say that. Anyways, I give them enough for all of us anyway. We'll talk to everybody soon. Peace.